Hello everyone and welcome to our team. We are going to present to you McDonald's doing business in France. Presentation given by Emily Jones, Evan Liddell, Chris Hunter, Carl Carter, and Tyson Klein. McDonald's was originally founded by brothers Richard and Maurice McDonald in 1948 in Los Angeles County. The original menu has ha was hamburgers, cheeseburgers, potato chips, coffee, sodas, and apple pie. By 1952, the McDonald brothers decided they needed to become more efficient in their processes and that they needed a more appealing appearance. They designed and constructed a new building in Fontana, California that was eye-catching. It had stainless steel, colored sheet metal, and ceramic tile, neon lights, and two 25-foot arches, known as the Golden Arches. By the 1960s, McDonald's had taken off and had taken off and franchises could not be could be found all over the United States. Market research done in 1962 showed that the primary thing people associated with McDonald's was the Golden Arches. The first international location was in New Zealand in 1976. Later, franchises opened internationally in Australia, United Kingdom, Switzerland and Finland and continued to spread throughout the whole world. In 1972, the first McDonald's franchise was opened in France. Now going on to France. France, which is known for its cuisine and the culture that centers on it, isn't a place you'd anticipate finding a flourishing fast food market. However, McDonald's currently has 1,485 operations in France, which serve approximately 46 million people a week. In 1999, McDonald's came under attack in France due to its U.S. trade restrictions on dairy products in France. The company was blamed for bringing junk food into the country. Nevertheless, France has, be has become McDonald's second most profitable market. Part of the success of the company within France can be attributed to the company's will willingness to accept cultural differences within the countries they build restaurants in. For example, some McDonald's restaurants within the country offer table-side service to cater to those who prefer longer meals. They have tailored their menu to take the French appetite into consideration. They have also increased their McCafe offerings to increase business during non-meal times. Since many French consumers do not snack between meals like Americans do. Another reason for the success of the company within France is the way they have marketed their restaurants. Instead of hard tables and chairs, many of the restaurants are furnished with plush, searing, plush searing and modern tables. Some contain fireplaces. McDonald's France has been the number one purchaser of beef in France. They source 95% of their produce from local farmers. The company's management for their French restaurants are native to the country and the management functions separately from the United States organization. Hey everyone, this is Emily. McDonald's France operates roughly 1,485 restaurants throughout France, serving 46 million people each week on average. In the 30 years that McDonald's has been in business in France, the chain saw the sharpest growth from 1991 to 2019, pre-COVID-19. 
During that time, the sales increased 11-fold, representing a total growth of 5 billion euros year over year. This is especially impressive given France's notoriety within Michelin-rated restaurants throughout the country, yet the French still love their McDo. McDonald's Europe saw a record high of 10 billion in revenue in Q2 of 2020, but unfortunately this was followed by a sharp decline in sales to 11.1 million just a short 12 months later in Q2 of 2021. This decline is a result of dining room closures, curfews within French cities stifling takeout and delivery sales, and the lack of drive through options that we see prevalent in the United States. Getting back to their growth pattern will unfortunately take some time as there's nothing that can really be done to fight the COVID laws and regulations in place. However, given the volatility and the back and forth of COVID regula regulation, I believe the short-term solution is to focus on promotional activity if their dining rooms are open. If they are closed, the focus should be on delivery and takeout promotions, possibly partnering with perhaps Coca-Cola or their other large vendors. Driving sales should be the number one priority by whatever means necessary. In addition, innovation is never a bad idea to create buzz and to generate sales. Passing off to Carl to review issues posed by the European Union. Today, I am going to cover an ongoing problem for McDonald's related to corporate taxes in France. Uh, today, I am going to cover an ongoing problem for McDonald's related to corporate taxes in France. In 2016, French authorities raided McDonald's local headquarters. McDonald's was accused of avoiding paying taxes in France. McDonald's was ultimately served a 300 million euro bill for taxes French authorities felt had been funneled through Luxembourg and Switzerland. French officials have claimed that McDonald's was intentionally sending its brand value to other countries with lower tax rates. This is an issue rooted in a European Union law that is designed to eliminate tax obstacles when it comes to cross-border interest and royalty payments. French officials have claimed that McDonald's dodged taxes by having restaurants make tax-deductible royalty payments to a lightly taxed subsidiary in Luxembourg. These issues arise due to how a company like McDonald's treats their intangibles. What is the value of the Golden Arches or of Ronald McDonald? These are things that certainly did not originate in France and are very difficult to place a value on. McDonald's and many other businesses intentionally move these payments to countries with favorable tax rules. This move can save companies money's, money as they pay a lower tax rate on their intellectual property in other countries. McDonald's had seemingly solved the issues related to their taxes. In 2019, they moved their international tax base to the United Kingdom amid the increased scrutiny from France and the rest of the European Union. Then, in March of 2021, former executives of the chain in France were questioned related to the tax evasion, once again opening the case of a McDonald's tax liabilities in France. So how does McDonald's solve the issue of taxes in France and the issues of tax liability? I feel the first step in the process has already been made. Moving from a tax-friendly country like Luxembourg to the United Kingdom means that they have effectively increased their tax rate. Increasing this tax rate gives less incentive to move money from one country to another. This will help take some of the potential risk away from them as they will have less prying eyes in places like France.
My name is Tyson Klein, and I will be talking about public relations problems for McDonald's in France. Since expanding to France in 1979, the French branch of the company has moved to number two in McDonald's total world market. Early on, the French branch ran into public relations issues regarding the presence of a fast food company. The issues came from the high standard for food in France, with a focus on the sources of ingredients. McDonald's in the U.S. had a reputation for using lower quality ingredients that came from hormone-fed cows and other processed foods. This did not sit well with the French community, specifically the local farmers after the World Trade Organization ordered Europe to accept hormone-fed beef. This translated directly to McDonald's and the ingredients they used in France, which put them under fire. Since then, the French branch of the company has shifted to using strictly French sourced ingredients and those being of higher quality from local farms. France has a certain expectation of quality when it comes to their food and the ingredients put into their food, so McDonald's walks a fine line when it comes to where and how they source all of their ingredients. This has created a higher standard for food that McDonald's restaurants offer in France in comparison to the U.S. chain of restaurants. With the French McDonald's branch being number two, the company runs the risk of easily falling into public relations problems, especially with the high standard that the country sets on food. They now have a reputation in France of not just being a fast food chain, but having much higher quality and customer experience, unlike the reputation of the company in the United States. Although with this higher standard for quality and experience in France, the company also runs the risk of damage to their brand image if these standards are not met by restaurants. To ensure continued growth, McDonald's cannot slack on their quality. They have, to, uh, they have the opportunity to even increase their quality even more, which will then translate into further growth in France and the European market as a whole. The high quality and standard that has been set also translates into the pricing for consumers and franchisees. Recently, the European branch of the company has received formal complaints for forcing price increases at franchise-operated locations as compared to their company-operated locations, as well as excessively increasing rent for franchise-operated restaurants. The company may have a viable reason to increase prices because of the higher quality of ingredients, but to avoid more public relations issues and potential legal antitrust law issues, the company should abandon these practices. I will now hand this over to the conclusion. Hi, this is Evan Liedel, and I'm going to sum everything up for you. So McDonald's, known as McDo in France, has a menu created to the French culture with parfaits, petite wedges, and more. Uh, the Big Mac there is called the Royal Cheese. In the last 12 months, McDonald's has had 11 million in revenue in the country. This is a sharp decline from the pre-pandemic years. In 2019 alone, they had 10 billion in sales. This is, of course, due to the COVID restrictions that have limited operations. Now, despite these restrictions, our resolution would be to uh, still focus on promotional activity to overcome these challenges, get their name out there, still work their usual marketing to really, as we're coming out of the pandemic, boost sales back to back to the 2019 numbers, or at least somewhere somewhere in that direction. Other issues McDonald's has faced in France would be starting in 2016, they've had uh, tax evasion issues. They were hit with a 300 million euro bill due to their practices of funneling through Switzerland. They initially solved this by changing their tax, tax base to the UK to increase their tax liability. Recently though, in March of this year, new allegations of tax evasion ha have arisen. To solve this, McDonald's really just needs to start being more open with their financials and tax practices. They, they can hand over their records to the French authorities of every transaction for the last decade so they could show that they have, they have nothing to hide. They could also pay the tax liabilities immediately to move past this issue. The more open they could be with the authorities, the more easy they make the process, the better it's going to be for them in the long term. It might be a little costly at first, but they need to be very open and honest with the authorities to avoid bigger penalties. A public relation issues started early on once McDonald's got to France. The country has had high standard for food and fast food is often looked down upon. 
this made McDonald's have to shift all of their ingredients to be sourced from France alone. They really need to focus on quality control to ensure that all the food ingredients meet these standards. Any blip in this could cause problems not just with the authorities, but it also could hurt their brand image. Now, the more that they put into better quality and finding ways to overcome higher prices on ingredients, the more it's going to translate over to other countries. If they have figured out the process of having higher quality food in one country and it's still boosting sales and still having that quality control, when they adopt those practices in other countries, it's going to be good overall for the company. So this could lead to a really good thing for them. Uh, they've also had issues with increasing prices on franchise-owned locations, franchisee-owned locations, but not on company ones. They've also increased rent, uh, seemingly so to, to help pay for the higher price ingredients. Uh, resolution there is going to be to abandon these practices uh, immediately. This uh, abandoning these practices will help avoid any public relation nightmare, but it could also, ins you know, avoid a possible antitrust lawsuit since they are in control of their franchisees' prices. Um, but yeah, also competing with them, it just could just lead to, to a pretty hefty lawsuit by the franchisees uh, and antitrust practices by them doing this. These, are, these three issues are, are pretty big issues that they could overcome. Uh, these resolutions, though, can help them get out of the pandemic, their tax problems, and their public relations problems if they just follow these. Thank you for listening to our presentation.